Is that you, George? Oh, yeah, dear. You can open the door, Sapphire. This ain't the landlord. Oh, you're nice, George. I got a big surprise for you. Oh, yeah, yes, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, keep them close. Tight. I'll leave you open. Come on. Now, sit down. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Oh, well, uh, what's the surprise? Why, well, you're sitting at it. The new dining room set. Holy smoke. Uh, where did this come from? I bought it. You said I should buy whatever I wanted for my birthday. And this is what I wanted. Well, when I said that, I was talking about something small, like a dust mop, or a bottle of fingernail polish or something. Uh, what was wrong with the old dining room set? Why, it was just horrible. And besides, I got a wonderful bargain on this. It's only going to cost you thirty dollars a month. Thirty dollars. Mm -hmm. And I told them you'd be in with the first payment in the morning. Look, honey, I ain't got no thirty dollars to put out. Uh, this stuff got to be going back. Get a chair there. Put that down. I'm keeping this dining room set. For years, I haven't been able to have anybody worthwhile to dinner. I was ashamed of that old set. Yeah, anybody worthwhile don't have to come to dinner. They can afford to buy their own. <laughs> I'm talking about intellectual people. Authors, musicians, artists, scientists, people like Professor Adams from the university. Uh, Thirty dollars a month, woman. You're gonna bankrupt me. I don't care. Oh, you don't, huh? No, I'm going to have some sparkling conversation at the dinner table for a change. Sparkling conversation? Yes, something besides pass the salt, where's the ketchup? Well, if I don't sparkle it up enough for you, I'll take my conversation elsewhere and eat. And in the words of the sparkling intellect, goodbye. Oh. <laughs> hey, Kingfish. Oh, hello, Andy. Hey, uh, I'd like for you to meet the boys. This is Joe Fritchie. He's a house painter. Ah, uh, how do you do that? I am. And Kingfish, this is Harry Wynn. He runs the newsstand down by the subway. Oh, yeah. Harry, I've seen you before. Yeah, how you been? And this is Eddie Cooper. He repairs jukeboxes around town. Well, I'm glad to know ya. Likewise. Well, I guess I'll be getting on over to the counter. I don't want to interrupt nothing. You can sit here. We were just leaving. Yeah, sit down there, Kingfish. See you tomorrow night, Andy. All right, so long, boys. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't let me keep you, Andy. Uh, I just want to get a hamburger or something. Yeah. Oh, I ain't finished my pie yet. But say, what you doing eating out? Well, me and Cap, I had another financial argument. Oh, one of them things, huh? Eh? Yeah, and you know when I made Cap, I was for richer or poor. But it looked like I ain't gonna get no richer, because she always seen out way to make me poor. So, Andy, take my advice and stay happily single. Well, being a bachelor ain't so good either, Kingfish. You see, uh, me and them three fellas is bachelors. We have to eat here every night at this restaurant. I'm sick of it. Well, what do you have to eat here for? There's a lot of other places. Yeah, but it's safer to eat here. Look at that. <laughs> you see, me and the boys each buy us a meal ticket at the beginning of the month. And that way we know we're going to eat every day until payday. Uh, me and the boys got to get our meal tickets for next month. I sure hope I got my $25. $25? Yeah, that's what uh, each of you four pay to eat here every night. Yeah. Andy, it's a funny coincidence. Are you talking about a meal ticket and I just lining up my new organization? What organization? The SFHMFUB. SFHMFUB? What's that? Society for Home Cooked Meals for Unwed Bachelors. Never heard. Well, Andy, I'll be telling you what to do now. Before you fellas buy your meal ticket, why don't you stop by the lodge hall in about an hour from now, and I'll explain the whole thing to you. Well, I'll talk it over with the boys. Yeah. Now, let me get this straight, Kingfish. We pay you $25 for the meal ticket, and we get to eat dinner at your house free every night for a month. Well, that's a uh, uh, harmony came of the society. I don't know. Is the food at your house any good? Now, look, Harry. When we organize this here society, we scour the neighborhood to get the best of eating for you fellas. And by some strange stroke of fate, my house was rated A1 sauce by Duncan Fife. Well, I can vote. Sapphire ain't no slouch, but you kill it. 
There you is, gentlemen, unsolicited uh, testimony. Sounds good to me. I'll take a meal ticket. Ah, uh, me too. Oh, I'll take one. Count me in there, Kingsley. Mm hmm. Well, uh, here you is, fellas. Here you is. Well, we'll see you tomorrow night at six. Be sure and tell Sapphire we all paid up. Oh, uh, Sapphire, oh, uh, that just reminds me. Now, listen, boys, this is a non-profit chain organization. And we never discuss money matters with the cook. Well, that takes it out of the non-profit uh, class. Oh, well, we won't say nothing. Right. We'll see you tomorrow night. Yeah, okay. Well, goodbye, society members. See ya. Don't slam the door when you go out. Mmm, <laughs> six o'clock. How does it look, George? Oh, honey, it looks fine, but you didn't need to go to all the trouble with the decoration. These intellectuals ain't used to no such fancy trimmings as this. Well, I want to make sure they enjoy themselves so they come back again. Oh, don't worry, honey, they'll be back. I'll be in now. Well, look all right. Oh, you look fine, honey. Hi, King Fish. Hello, old time. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sapphire, uh, this is Joe uh, Fritchie, the painter fellow I was telling you about. Please to oh. know you. And uh, this is Lady Cooper, the man in the music business. I uh, as well as you know you. And this is uh, Harry Wynn, the newspaper man. Hello. Yeah, we brought our good appetites along, Sapphire. <laughs> George, you're acting like this is a restaurant. Well, honey, that's the way with them there are big intellectuals. Why, they don't go in for them social graces and all that sort of stuff. They are nonconformal. <laughs> Oh, so. Well, honey, just put the food on the table, and in a few moments, the conversation will be floating all over the house. <laughs> well, it certainly is nice having all you men up to dinner tonight. Pass the pepper, please. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Cooper, I understand you're in the music business. Just what do you play? Oh, anything you want, uh, automatically. <laughs> oh, it must be wonderful to have talent like that. How did you ever learn? Oh, uh, he went to night school, didn't you, Eddie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pass the salt, please. Surely. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Wynn, as a newspaper man, you must meet lots of interesting personalities. Uh, yeah. Uh, Cab Calloway was up to my place the other day. Oh? Did you get a story from me? Yeah. Did you hear the one about the... Uh... <laughs> oh, something must have went down the wrong windpipe. All right, what were you saying, Andy? Uh, I didn't say nothing. Can I have another roll? Oh, certainly. Here you are, Mr. Fritchie. Tell us something about your painting. Oh, they keep me busy. Well, what do you paint mostly? Portraits or landscape? Kitchens. <laughs> Yeah, you know them uh, little baby cats. Well, those are kittens. Well, the boy had uh, rolled in out there. You couldn't understand it so good. Uh, Mr. Cooper, were you at Carnegie Hall the other evening when Heifetz played Brahms? No. Uh, who won? Oh! <laughs> there you're sparkling stuff, Delphi. <laughs> um, I suppose you're syndicated, Mr. Wynn. No, but I've been vaccinated. Ah! 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 Oh! Oh! This is nice. I got to get a pen to write some of this stuff down. <laughs> uh, Mr. Fritchie, do you care for Picasso? Nah, uh, I'm gonna skip this late. That was a good meal, Miss Stevens. Well, I got a date. I'll be seeing you. Yeah. Me too. Yep, I gotta go too. Well, thanks for everything, Sapphire. Well, so long, boys. <laughs> Well, I feel mentally invigorated. I don't know why. Well, you should, too. You always said you wanted the intellectuals here. They are not my idea of intellectual. Well, they are mine, and I'm going to invite them same four fellas back here tomorrow night. Oh, no, you're not. They're not eating here tomorrow night or ever again. Huh. Here you are. Thank you. Okay. Oh, hi, Jake B. Oh, hi, Amos. Hi, uh, you buy some flowers? Yeah, just a 35-cent deluxe bouquet. Uh, what is it, a peace offering? Yeah, just a few posies to strew along the rocky road of matrimony. Yeah, well, that's a good idea, all right. 
Uh, say, Kingfish, Andy was telling me how you and Sapphire was feeding a group of bachelor fellas. Yeah, he must be uh, doing our bit to uh, help the national heartburn. No, oh, I think it's wonderful of Sapphire to put herself out that way. Oh, she put out all right. <laughs> well, you must have better be getting these flowers home. I'll be seeing you, son. Yeah, I see you, Kingfish. Yes, Professor Adam. Well, I'm very sorry you can't make a definite dinner date with us, but, um, suppose we leave it like this. The first night, you're free. Just call us, and then you come right on over. Oh, it'll be no trouble at all. I'm looking forward to seeing you. All right, goodbye. George. Hello, honey. I got a little surprise for you. For me? Oh, thank you. Well, don't thank me. That's just a little croquet of depreciation from them four intellectuals, minus Andy, that was here last night. Oh, Ben. Now, Sapphire, that ain't no way to act. They just want to show you how they enjoyed being here last night and how they're looking forward to joining us again tonight. We're not having those phony intellectuals. If we have anyone again, it'll be Professor Adam. Well, there's no point in letting the table go to waste while we are waiting on him. Now, these four fellas... No, and that's my final word. Now, go get ready for dinner. Well, what are we having for dinner? Pot roast. Well, you got enough in case I want second, third, fourth, and fifth. There's enough. <laughs> Ten minutes to six. George? Oh, yeah, yeah, honey. Those friends of yours soiled my best tablecloth. Would you take this laundry up on the roof and hang it on the line, please? Yes, my dear. that for me again. Roast on. 
Hot ropes? Oh, I'd love some. Well, I'm sure I gave you one. One plate? That's supposed to be for all of us? Well, that ain't even enough for me. Turn the basket down again. <laughs> Empty again, honey. Y'all must be a dry spell setting in now. Would you mind filling that for me again? Oh, <laughs> 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 what are you doing? Oh, uh, 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 I thought I heard a flying saucer zooming over. Sit down and eat your dinner. Place for four guys. What's a kingfish trying to pull? Where is your plate? Well, if I had a plate, I'd be eating, wouldn't I? Well, I don't remember giving you one. There's something funny going on here. I don't know what it could be. I'm just waiting on the food, that's all. We'll send the basket down again. George, you're acting very strange tonight. Well, I'm just hungry, that's all. Oh, uh, honey, uh, could I have another plate, please? Uh, uh, just give me one from the kitchen. You seem to want to get me out of the room for some reason, but I'm not going back in that kitchen. Here, use this. Oh, yeah, honey, that's kind of small. I'll fill it up as often as you want, but I'm not leaving the table. Hmm. Well, honey, you setting in a draft, yeah. I'll just close the window. Oh, thanks. That's good, because it was a little chilly on my back. Empty. <laughs> What's going on down there? I'm going down and see. <laughs> hey, it's stuck. It's locked. It's locked. locked. <laughs> hey, kingfish. No answer. I'm going to put a note in this basket and bang it against the window. George, I'm sure I heard somebody calling you. Ain't nobody out here, huh? Hmm. Say, George, you want your coffee now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, door lock. We are starving. Do something. Hey, Jake, this is coming up. Do something. It's going to rain. We're going to get soaked. Hey, man, you're putting something in the basket. You ain't seen Andy. But we had a misunderstanding here last night. Uh, uh, look, Calhoun, if you see Andy, you tell him I done left town. Yeah, a big mining deal. Yeah, I had to take a load of coal to Newcastle. Uh, thanks, Calhoun. inconveniencing you. I ran into Mrs. Stevens and she insisted that I join you for dinner. Oh, no. We're glad to have you. Now, you two men just make yourself comfortable and I'll have dinner on the table in no time. My, it's going to be so nice. Just the three of us. We'll have some real sparkling conversation. Yeah, have a seat there, Professor. Kingfish! Kingfish! <laughs> Come on out, Kingfish, wherever you is. He's not in there. And after last night, he'd better hide. It's nearly supper time. Let's go up to his apartment. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. 
Well, tell me, boys, what's the Emily Fultz of the situation? Shall we eat and then clobber the kingfish, and shall we clobber him and then eat? That's easy, man. Yeah. Your work must be so fascinating, Professor. What do you teach? Medieval history. Oh, yeah. That meat he's had a fascinating history, all right. A <laughs> <Our> pastor's foot. <laughs> That's the back door. I go see who it is. Overseas on film. 